you. Now for years, King's Cross Station looked like this, green hoarding on the front of a run-down building. And for decades, the King's Cross area, for Londoners, was associated with drug dealing and prostitution. But now, things have changed, thanks to one of Europe's biggest regeneration projects. Let's join Alice van der Kravi, who can tell us more. Alice. Riz, this is one of London's busiest stations. Six out of 11 tube lines pass through here, uh, so the upgrade was certainly a long time coming. Now, uh, one of the first changes that you will notice, behind me there, you will see the beautiful facade. It hasn't been on show since the 1860s. The second uh, most noticeable change is this huge square in front of the facade. It used to be a clutter of entrances. Part of it uh, was within the station, so it's all been opened up for people to access easily. The new look station was officially opened this morning by the Transport Secretary and Boris Johnson doing the honours. Three, two, one. It opened to fanfare and applause this morning, but of course this station never actually closed. As regular passengers will know, building work has been taking place all around them for years, creating what the mayor described as a higgledy-piggledy chaos. Today, though, he went so far as to call it a masterpiece of modern design. The trains, the track, the signalling, that's obviously critical, but people need to be able to circulate smoothly, they need to be able to enjoy the space. Uh, the, the ticket hall over there is fantastic, and this will help us to cope with a massive increase in... We're going to go... 30% increase in demand by 2031 in, in King's Cross. Plus, we're going to have Crossrail 2 coming in, intersecting just over there. You're going to need more space. But getting more space has taken four years and cost more than half a billion pounds. That's bought a new concourse with shops and cafes, a new glass roof, a restored facade and, of course, the square in front. As infrastructure programmes go, it's up there with the biggest in Europe. But will passengers facing high fares really care? Is the cost of a restoration like this going to be borne by passengers ultimately? And should it be? Well, ultimately, the investment in rail is about creating more capacity. Um, this sort of station was £550 million, pounds, and we really focus on delivering absolute value for money. And that then creates the capacity to have more trains in the station, and people then have better services in the future. I haven't been to this area for a long time, and I think the whole area is stunning. It feels nice, a place to sit when you can wait for your friends, family, whoever. So yeah, it's nice, the world feels nice really impressive and um, it you know just shows how a gloomy area can be transformed and um, have some life brought back into it. So to think that until practically yesterday this was a place you wouldn't really want to hang around in, Same, something famously of a bit of a red light district, somewhere you wanted to pass through quickly. So the investment uh, has certainly been welcome here, but it's also brought wider benefits uh, to the community as a whole. Private companies have been investing billions of pounds just to the north of here, as Mark Ashdown reports. And quite deserted after dark. The tavern stood at some distance from any high road and was approachable only by a dark and narrow lane so that Hugh was much surprised, surprised to find, find several people, people drinking there, there and, and great, great merriment going on. As mentioned by Charles Dickens in Barnaby Rudge, the Boot pub is still here today and because of this reference is pretty much guaranteed a place in history. So what does this new chapter for King's Cross hope to add? The same family has been pulling pints here for 25 years. That's £3.60, please, Simon. Thank you very much. The walls are full of old tales. They welcome the regeneration as long as the new tourist map doesn't forget them. It could take away the tourism because the tourists could go to there and not go anywhere else. At the moment, they do wander around and they come in, and especially with the Charles Dickens um, business. So I don't know, it's just a waiting game for us here. So a bit worried? Yeah, yeah, a little bit concerned. A little bit concerned. Things have already improved dramatically. King's Cross was once a byword for drugs and prostitution, the streets full of crime and violence. Then there was the fire in the underground in 1987. 31 people perished. The area now has lots of secret gardens and family spaces. Plenty to be proud of if you know where to look. The key is to build on that. 
I think there is still some apprehension locally about what it means for the area, but King's Cross has been evolving for so many years that it really does feel that it's actually part of a historic change. I think the challenge for Camden Council and other people is to make sure local people benefit from it. Which is what this coming weekend is about. A carnival is being staged just behind the station to celebrate how some of the old Victorian heritage is being restored. It really does root this development in its place and its locality and it's one of the reasons why perhaps King's Cross is, is so successful. It's that combination of cutting edge new and historic buildings brought back to life that uh, the people find so, um, so enticing. And plenty of tourists still come from far and wide to hunt out the area's history. If you say to King's Cross anywhere in the world, they automatically get an image of King's Cross and what they've heard from years ago, but it's not, not, not anymore. This once notorious corner of London has turned a new page and now might just have a bright future. Mark Ashdown, BBC London News. So all sorts of changes happening here. Someone who knows the area very well is Alan Dean, social historian, of course. Uh, now, first of all, Boris Johnson this morning called this a masterpiece of modern design. What do you make of it? Well, this is a really significant moment for the area. This building is 160 years old. It's actually a very modern looking building. And for the first time for so many years, we can see the whole facade. It's very exciting to see this wonderful building, which in a way has been ignored a little bit for its younger sibling, which is the St Pancras with all the mock gothic splendor. But in fact, this building has an incredible charm in itself. And to be, a, and to, be able to see it is fantastic. Of course, great for passengers, but what about the people who live here, the residents of King's Cross, because they do live here in, in many, many thousands. Well, indeed, it's a very important point. In a way, the, the locals have been out of sight of the commuters for so many years. And those people who lived here were part of an incredible wave of people going back to the birth of industry in King's Cross. Way before these buildings, this big, this, these big railway terminal were built, this area was a sleepy backwater. So the area has seen a great deal of change, but significantly, there's a lot of people who do live in the area and I would love to see that connection between this new metropolis that's being built in King's Cross and the locals. And we heard about the companies investing just to the north of here. Do you think that's going to change the character of this area? Is it a new, a new type of company? King's Cross has always had industry. It was built on the railways, the canal, the gas industry. And in a way, what we're looking at in the 21st century is the new industry, the arts, the online, the design industries. These are new industries for a new era. Out goes the huff, the puff, the steam, and the physical manpower. Thousands of people working in these stations. Now it's a different era. New buildings, new ideas. On that note, Alan Dean, thank you very much. Thank you. We will uh, hand back to you is in the studio. Alice, thanks very much indeed. It's a huge global industry with an increasing number of Bollywood films being shot here in London.